Division because Norwich City, relegated last season, are poised to string spring straight back at the first attempt. And they went into tonight's home match against Sunderland with a lead of 10 points. For their part, Sunderland and manager Laurie McMenemy are in real trouble at the other end, just four off the bottom. Our commentator at Carrow Road is Jerry Harrison. Well, a league match with a cup at stake, the Norwich Sunderland Perpetual Trophy, it's called. The idea to foster the good relations between the two clubs and supporters following last season's Milk Cup final, which Wembley Police said was just like the good old days. And both sides aiming for better times tonight. Norwich on the brink of promotion, Sunderland dangerously near to a further drop to the third division. Well, Norwich have won 23 of their 36 league games. It'll be a return to the first division for most of this side, but three of them have never been there before, including Kevin Drinkle, whose form and 22 goals indicate that he'll be a considerable force next year. Sunderland's revival under Laurie McMenemy hasn't happened yet. A disastrous start of boardroom bickering and legal action certainly haven't helped. 30 players have already been used in the first team this season and still looking for the right blend. For Laurie McMenemy, the managing director with total control, a testing time of his leadership, the club still capable of pulling in gates of 35,000, but perilously close to the third division for the first time in their 107-year history. It hasn't all gone smoothly at Norwich. The rebuilding of the new 1.7 million stand caused a boardroom revolution, but that was never allowed to affect performances on the field, and 3,000 more seats will be ready for the beginning of next season, everything paid for. Referee is Brian Hill from Kettering, and it's a very, very blustery night. And it's Sunderland to kick off with the wind behind their backs, right down this pitch from right to left. Sunderland, one win in the last 12 games, but they haven't won away from home for five months. And they've gone here for pretty well the most experienced lineup they can get. Norwich City, 10 consecutive home wins but a bit of a gamble here because they're without two midfield players Mendham and Williams who are both ill and they've gone for two wingers Andy Dibble with the advantage of this considerable wind offside Dibbles come right out. Drinkle nearly had that one in. And off the line in the end by Kennedy when Dean had a shot. And Dibble, the Sunderland goalkeeper, was in all sorts of trouble when he came out that far. Van White cutting that one out as Sunderland go for the long break. Free kick. Well, almost a breakthrough at this end when uh, Dibble came out here, nicely put back in, Drinkle the first time shot, then it comes back again for Dean to whistle one in, and Kennedy's in the way. Oh, oh, house in for Wayne Biggins. Culver house again, nice accurate one, and smaller Drinkle. Well, that's a fair challenge by Sean Elliott, real power there. Doing a good job at the back. Kennedy it's a hard one for Gale to chase and there's a foul there by Barry Venison Watson a nice ball to Gordon Gordon coming in for a move and over the top but it worked well and that was the quickest possible transfer of the ball from the back to the wing. A quick return and a shy at least, but well over the top. It's a great ball from Dave Watson. A nice return from Wayne Biggins. And a bouncing ball hit over the top. In for Biggins this time. Nice replay for Dale Gordon. And goes uh, Drinkle, good leap, under pressure, but no power on it and no danger.
but there's a problem for Sunderland. Elliot looks uh, as if he's got an injury. And that really is the last thing they want. Well, this doesn't look good for Sunderland. Elliot, their captain and key defender, is going off. And a very inexperienced 17-year-old is coming on. Bruce finding only Tony Ford. Dale White has got forward for the substitute. There's a lot of players in there. White turning and shooting. And not a bad effort. His first touch in a difficult circumstance. It shows he's obviously got a bit of talent and poise. Bruce with a kick. Barham does well to keep it in. Here's Dean. Drinkle, I think, might call that a shot, but it was an attempt to get to, to catch Dibble off his line. Well, that's a bad kick. And Hetsky and Gray get him out of trouble. Gray's clearance, but it's still Norwich City, Culverhouse, and Dean is onside. And there's a chance for two players, Wayne Biggins and Dale Gordon, and missed by both of them. Well, that was uh, a good break. Culverhouse to Dean. Sunderland thought he was offside. He wasn't. He's got time to pull it back. Biggins can't get it. And Northern Dale Gordon. And Sunderland escape. Here's the corner. Dale Gordon with it. It's a cracking run by uh, Drinkle. He got up a terrific height. Ford still in a bit of trouble. Gale won that. Away goes Gale with White. Ford coming into the middle. Still Howard Gale. Tony Ford gets up. Wallace! Oh, great effort and a good save. That was a fine volley by Ian Wallace. Well, they won the ball in the air, Grimsby, Tony Ford, and uh, it comes back to Wallace, not an easy one at all. Swings at it, and it's a great save by Chris Woods. Van Wyck through here for John Deere. Phelan gets through the middle. It's Gordon against Venison. Biggins flicks on, away by Kennedy. Bruce gets in there hard, but it's... An infringement against Ian Wallace. Fifteen minutes of the game left, still no breakthrough. Dean with a kick. Bruce, can he turn? Drinkle. Drinkle again. Away by Gray. Phelan knocks it back in once more, but Ford has a bit of time here. It's straight to Culverhouse. Watson under a bit of pressure. Pumped away nicely to Drinkle. Drinkle's getting in on this one. Good save by Andy Dibble. Held his ground. Didn't fall too early and kept an eye on the ball. It was well done. Good long clearance by uh, Dave Watson. Caught Sunderland pushing up. Drinkle's onto it quicker. Holds off a couple of players. Gets his shot in. Awkward one. And an excellent save by on long lone goalkeeper Andy Dibble. Dates to Proctor. Well, that's not a bad ball from Proctor. Tony Ford and Van Wyker slip. Ford's got a chance here. Ford with a gaping goal, which indeed was quickly closed down by Chris Woods. But that was a cracking ball from Mark Proctor. Van Wyck slips. Tony Ford, an open invitation, but Woods is out and gap has closed and he misses back and nil nil was the final score norwich still then uh, on course for the first division 
Uh, it's really no more than a formality. The real scrap is for the other two places immediately below them. And at the bottom, it's going to be a battle for Sunderland. But they certainly showed the right spirit, I thought, as indeed they'll have to away to Wimbledon on Saturday. And who knows, we may have seen the turning point for Sunderland tonight. At any rate, here's manager Laurie McMenemy. What's the most difficult thing he's faced in his time at Sunderland? The fact that I knew, always knew that there was something not quite right at that club, um, but couldn't put my finger on it. And I had to get there to try and find out. And now I've got there, there's a lot of things which um, are different. And when I'm chasing, it's like putting your finger in a hole in the dam. You put it in and then some water springs out somewhere else. It's not just about football at a big club like this, it's about politics as well. And uh, it is part of the community. It's like a Lowry painting. You've been an educated man, know all about things like that, Jerry. And uh, it is the Punters Club, and we haven't done well by them uh, this season. I'll take responsibility for that. But I think that uh, it, it is not as far off as people think of getting on the up and up again. And, and we could be, we've still got very good gates. The support is magnificent. They're very loyal and, uh, and they're obviously patient. But I would hope that we can get out of trouble this year, ready to make a spurt next year. A lot of clubs would be. Yeah.